Yeah, good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure to be here. All right, so, Mohamed Abdullahi, let's get straight to all of this now. First, we start off with the... Uh, we're looking at our current reality as a country, and some people would tag it as bad policies, but others would say, is there really a bad policy? Is there any policy that has been formulated that is bad? Or is the fact that you have policies that would not reflect the interests of the people, or on the other hand, policies are not implemented? At the end of the day, uh, these policies might just be categorized as bad policies. Now, one of the things that's affecting us as a country, as we speak now, is the fact that the nation has been plunged into the fuel crisis situation. And so petrol is scarce. The scarcity of the commodity. We also have reports saying that we have lost about 4.2 trillion naira as a country because we have not met our quota uh, by OPEC. And petrol is also not sold at the rate it should be, 165 naira per liter. We're looking at petrol sold above that particular price. So now, what do you make of this? Because if you look at also what happened just recently in Sri Lanka, it's not different from what's going on in Nigeria, where the people are dissatisfied from government promises that have failed and have not yielded any result. Yeah, um, coincidentally, or I would say incidentally, um, when this new government came into power, um, particularly President, uh, one of his campaign points was that uh, there was actually no subsidy being paid you know, to subsidize um, uh, the price of uh, petroleum products uh, in Nigeria. But on the assumption of uh, power, I'm sure they realized that uh, the, 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 the past government have been subsidizing, particularly the price of uh, PMS for Nigerians. And so probably they were not prepared for that subsidy. It, uh, the amount being budgeted for subsidy kept growing year in, year out. In fact, this year, from um, January to this present day, we are told via reports that uh, about 1.8 trillion Naira have been paid already uh, for the subsidy of uh, PMS uh, petroleum product uh, for Nigerians. So one of the ways is this. Uh, I always like to give two options. Uh, for me, I think we have gone past the, the, the era of petroleum subsidy. But if you look at the fact that uh, we are in a dire situation in Nigeria, it's not only limited to Nigeria, actually, it, uh, across the world. When, if, you, if you ask the government to take away subsidies entirely at this moment, that would be in increasing the pains of Nigerians and the challenges Nigerians face day in, day out. So, what is the solution? The solution is simple. It is simple because I feel, and this is my opinion, that if this present government, for instance, have kept to uh, its uh, promise of building at least one or two refineries every two years, like it told Nigerians before coming into power in 2015, we would have, we would have gone past these, uh, these challenges. Because the major challenge for us, like, for us is that we produce crude oil, we take it overseas, it is refined, and we import uh, PMS. You understand? So that is the major challenge that is taking away uh, our foreign reserve, for instance, in terms of US dollars. So I think the government has uh, failed in that respect of making sure that our refineries, even though if we are not building new refineries, but we have four refineries across Nigeria, and all of them are not producing a single drop of PMS. That is a big challenge, that in seven years or more of this current administration, we are unable to fix, revamp, or at least build one more refinery. We are making a mistake that at this moment in time, we are only back banking on uh, the, refiner the refineries being built, uh, particularly by Dangote. You understand? That might be a big challenge as well, because if it comes on board, it might become a monopoly. And nobody, when you have a monopoly, uh, the monopolies dictate price. You understand? So it is also a big challenge. So I feel.
Mohammed Abdullahi, do we still have you uh, on the line? Hello. or even build more big challenge for us at the moment so the subsidies we can't take it off because we increase the pains of nigerians yeah but 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 in all of this you, you have talked about that it's actually a global issue right so if you say that there's a lot that's going on but not mm, for yes. a nation that is an oil producing mm. uh, for africa you want to talk about it and the fact that you also have stated that uh, our inability uh, to refine our product is also a concern. It does not make it a global issue. I mean, that's not it. Is that what's obtainable in different climes? Some people have said that, and we have seen it as just simple, that the current conflict in or war, you want to say, in Russia and Ukraine should have a positive impact on Africa, especially countries that are all producing. And we should be benefiting at this point. But that's not the case for us. First, we don't have the capacity to refine our products, and so we are left with the option of importing this product. On the other hand, we have failed on different occasions to meet the quota of OPEC. Where does this leave all of us, and what can the people do in all of this? Yes, um, what the people can do is continue to agitate, uh, but agi Agitation, I mean, peacefully, continue to agitate, continue to call on the authorities to do what is right. What is right is what I have stated earlier. Uh, yes, the, the crisis going on in Ukraine and in Russia would have benefited Africa, particularly Nigeria, if we have put our acts together in the first place. But you know, you agree with me as well that uh, this administration is at its tail end. And in fact, there is no time anymore to build a new refinery. Uh, I think the, the administration has less than about 11 months or so. So there is no time, I think, to build new refineries. So what, what we we'll continue to face the challenge, because I, I, like, like I mentioned earlier, we don't have the capacity to refine. Uh, we, we, again, in security-wise, it's hampering our, our capacity to lift even crude. Uh, to the expectant of, 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 of meeting the quota of OPEC. So these are, these are two different issues. Now, we, we, we need to sort out the security issues around the Niger Delta and even all other parts of the country to make sure that at least we are able to lift the expected quota allocated to Nigeria by OPEC. Uh, and how do we do this? Is, is making sure that we are able uh, to, to, to man our crude properly, we ensure that it is the professionals and, as, and, and also the companies who are um, uh, mandated to do this that are in charge. Because there is a whole lot of bunkering going on. There, there is a whole lot of uh, issues of our, 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 our crude not being accounted for. Uh, so it is important that the, 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 the institution in charge, the agency in, start in charge, uh, ensure that it is professionals that are doing this job and the agencies and the companies that are mandated are also doing it accordingly. But for the, for the people, we, we, are, we are a bit limited on what we can do. What we can do is just like we co continue to talk. I am not in support of violent protests. Uh, you make mention of Sri Lanka. We saw that people got into their presidential palaces, swimming in their presidential palace pool. In fact, destroying uh, properties that will also be renewed and refurbished by taxpayers' money. You don't want to. You don't want us to degenerate into such situation in Nigeria, uh, because that will also be making us go backwards. Uh, but what we can continue to do as people is to call on uh, the agencies, the government, and the relevant institutions to do the right thing. Well, um, just as we move away for the want of time, we'll quickly just brush the issue of, you know, poverty. But before then, you've talked about the need for building a new refinery because we don't have time. And so, so let's even assume that we had time. We had, it was, we were still in 2019. This government had talked about uh, we not having any business and the refineries that would be very functional. But I also remember that the TUC have accused this government of wasting 9.5 billion naira on, um, you know, 
turnaround maintenance of our refineries for the past 10 years. And in 25 years, there's also been an accusation of this government wasting about 25 billion of the government, now not the uh, APC government or, you know, this administration, but we're talking about the government now in, in you know, generally, 25 billion now. Should we be talking about new refineries? What's wrong with the uh, uh, other refineries that we have? Why they're not functioning? And so are we just going to just ignore? Well, we seem to be having uh, some bit of an extra, um, you know, sound coming from your location. I'm hoping that you can put that in control just as we close this conversation down. 25, you know, billion naira. Uh, this has been expanded 25 years or thereabout. Now, is there any need for us to be talking about new refineries when we have constantly chunked in resources to ensure that we have? And we call it turnaround maintenance for our refineries. I mean, what's really going on with Nigeria? What's going on with us? Now, I, I come quickly to the issue of poverty. It was reported in 2020 that 89.0 million persons were already in poverty in Nigeria. Now, in 2022, we're looking at 95 persons, 95.1 million persons who would be in poverty. All of this, what would the people do? And we have seen that constantly people take to the street to protest, but that has not yielded any result because you have, you know, uh, the government in some way. When you have the police clam on the people, in other ways, in other words, it means there's a government. So, um, how how do you explain all of this, and how can Nigerians continue uh, to cope? What can Nigerians do in situations like this, or in a situation like this? Well, I'm sure that we have last. Yes, um, the, the the issue the issue of uh, poverty it's uh, it's quite alarming, like you like you mentioned. Um, mm, uh, but, but but there are, there are a number of um, reasons uh, that that's alluding to to, to that uh, alarming numbers of uh, of, uh, of of poverty in Nigeria. The the fact that the government is not thinking out of out of the box, you know, in creating enabling. Mind you, government all over the all over the world cannot create um, jobs for every of its citizens, including Nigeria. But I think what is important is creating the enabling environment uh, for people to, to thrive, uh, to, for people to engage in their petty trade, for people to engage in their small trade, and, and, and so on. Uh, in Nigeria, the major issues is uh, the, the, the issue of insecurity. Because as we speak, um, even the farmers in remote locations who have lived all their lives in remote locations and are not willing to migrate to urban centers in Nigeria are prevented from going to uh, farm, are prevented from carrying out their daily agricultural activities. And you know, that affects everybody. You know, it causes food shortage. With, um, the supply chain is, uh, is distorted in terms of uh, food supply. And those who are able to lift those food from their remote situation, uh, remote location to the urban centers are also affected. So it's a chain reaction. What insecurity is, uh, is, uh, is, is causing in Nigeria? Uh, for instance, I used to tell people uh, that, that sometimes ago in 2018, I used to drive all the way from Lagos uh, to Niger State and even Kaduna. I take my families, whenever it's holiday, it's festivity period. And we stay, we, 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 we stop by the road to buy food, to buy other materials. But now, because I am not able to do that again, I have stopped, you know, that economic activities. And in fact, there are hundreds and thousands of people who are unable to do that. And that is causing that chain of economic activities to stop. You understand? So that is the major reason why we have a high level of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of unemployment in Nigeria, which translates into uh, uh, poverty. Because in as much as you are unable to carry out uh, your daily activities, which brings in money to pay your bills, to, uh, to provide food and other basic necessities. One falls into poverty. So these are the chains. What do we do? What we should do is that we must, uh, government have the biggest responsibility in this, uh, in this area. And what do I mean? Government need to find a way to tackle insecurity. In fact, it is very challenging all over Nigeria. You know, if insecurity is tackled, 
we will have leeway, we will have pathway uh, for prosperity for many Nigerians. All right, and our uh, economic activities. Mo Mohammed I'm not saying that is the major reason for all, mm. but that is the major reason that uh, we need to tackle. Mohammed Abdullahi, thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. We appreciate your thoughts and the perspective you've brought in on the show. We look forward to having uh, you share your thoughts. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you as always. We, we need to go now because we're out of time. But the question is that protests in Nigeria hasn't yielded any result. And some people say even with the protests as it were peaceful, it's actually been confronted with a lot. And sh what should Nigerians do uh, in a situation like this where the economy is on the other side of the divide? Well, it will be a question that will continue to beg for answers. Uh, that's the size of our show this morning. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, my name is Messi Ebopo. Have a great morning and happy holiday.